Oh, is it 1-0? Oh? Okay, 4.0. 1 oh. Okay. Number two. Number two for discussion. Is there any other this evening? I just got a quick question um, in regards to a purchase order under 4.01 number two. The membership dues for the FADS, is that including um, our dues with FSA or is that just FADS? That's just FADS? Okay, that's the only okay. question I have. All right, so we have these items that we've uh, mentioned that needs to be pulled. Um, and if there's no other uh, deletions or anything this evening, I entertain a motion and second that we adopt the agenda. Ms. Agner makes that motion. Ms. Carlton seconds it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, so carried. And then uh, 2.04, the approval of minutes, June the 1st, uh, 2022, regular school board meeting and executive session. Ms. Carlton makes that motion. Ms. Mathis seconds it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, on June the 28th, 2022, the special board meeting. All right, Ms. Mathis makes that motion. Ms. Agner seconds it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, so carried. This brings us down to our presentations uh, this evening. And uh, so the first one on the agenda is an update on North Florida Medical Dental Outreach. I understand we've got a delegation here. So whoever wants to come and share, come on down and, and uh, share with us. Good evening. Glad to be here. Last year when we were here, we were asking to um, provide services this last school year, so I'm excited to share our report and um, ask for your um, signature again for a MOU for this coming school year. But first, I'd like to introduce my great team. Without them, we couldn't have done what we've done this year. So um, Denise and Karen and Good myself. Good to have you um, Registered dental hygienist. We provided services to um, Steen Hatchie, pri um, Taylor Primary, and Taylor Elementary. So there were almost 1,200 consent forms that were sent out, 1,183, and 33% were returned. We started services in November. We were here for about a week. Um, we squeezed it in between the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays. And then we're back again in January for a couple of weeks, all of February and all of March. So we um, enjoyed staying in Perry for several months, got to know the Hampton and staff real well, <coughs> and mom is right next door. So, um, but we were excited because we provided almost 1,200 individual services to um, almost 400 children. So we're hoping this next year, um, this usually the first year, it takes it a little bit a while. The first year, we don't get as many consent forms returned, but we're hoping this next year we'll be able to um, have more consent forms returned and um, continue building our services. But um, I do have the individual breakdown. So like I said, almost 400, so 397 we did assessments on. 60 of them were at low risk. We always do a risk assessment on our children. 136 were at moderate risk and 222 were at high risk. So definitely know that there is a need here in um, Taylor County to be able to really work with the um, children that are underserved and really need the access to these services. Um, 277 received um, dental cleaning, 385 had a fluoride varnish, 280 had um, chair side oral hygiene instruction, and 280 children had a dental sealant placed. Some of them may have had one to four sealants, um, so almost a thousand individual teeth were sealed. And then 351 children, and some of them may have had one to seven or eight teeth had a silver diamine fluoride applied, which this is, I think we talked about it last year, it's the actual material that stops decay, it arrests it. So we're really excited that we're able to place this because most of these children, it's hard for them to get in for care. So this um, stops and then we've also put it on as a preventive measure on their, their permanent teeth. 
so that that way it also um, builds them up and makes them a little bit stronger. So, um, and all of them, they, Karen and Denise went into all the classrooms and provided in-classroom oral health, total health education. So there was almost 1,200 kids for all three of those schools that um, had that service. So any questions or anything you what uh, service like was performed at the new clinic if it was already portable? No, actually we have portable equipment that we <coughs> take and we set up in the schools. So we were there at each school. We would steam hatch you for about a week, maybe four days, work that in between testing schedule. And then the other ones we were at primary, almost a, um, primary, yeah, primary two weeks. And then the rest of the time we were at um, elementary. Would, uh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I, I'm just going to say it, it, you know, even with what numbers that you shared with us this evening, that uh, it was really a successful year of trying to help our kids out. Uh, and, um, and you really look for even more next year? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. We, we try to reach for at least 50%, you know, consent forming. We also had several children that, you know, all our children were referred to our new dental clinic in, um, in Taylor. And some of them were at high risk that we really worked to get in that, you know, if they had abscesses or they were in pain. And we were even here this past summer, or past summer, I'm already thinking we're into the next school year. They were, they were just here last week that uh, they were here doing um, summer school and worked with the pre-K and, um, you know, that was something we just kind of, let's see if there's time, and we worked it in, so there was another. And those were children that they had not seen during the regular school year, so we were act, uh, actually able to capture those, those kids. And some of them with abscesses that we worked with the dentist to get them in and get them out of pain. So I have yeah. two questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, Darren, um, the kids that you say you're seeing, um, is it, are you guys seeing it work better wherever you come in the schools that y'all are able to be able to service more kids? Um, is it like once you come in, the consent form has already went and came back and those are the kids you know you're gonna serve? And then, I mean, if a parent find out about your services, are they able to visit you at your clinic or you guys just try to hit them the next time you're in the school? So. Whatever preventive services we, that we can provide the hygienist, we try to do there. Some of these children, even though I gave you the numbers that we did assessment, some of these children we may have seen two or three times while we were at the school. Because okay. if they needed a cleaning or sealant or the SDF, then we really tried to work to get them in while we were there. Because okay. um, once we're there, we're s the, the clinic is basically set up for about a month. I mean, at Taylor, at the primary, I mean, elementary a month, and then for two weeks at the other schools. So we really work to do what we can, and then whatever we can't, you know, as far as referral that they need a dentist. And then if we don't get them completed, then when we go back this next year, their consent forms are good for two years. So if for some reason they don't get another consent form, then we already have it noted in their record that they still need additional work. As far as your location here in town, um, are we the only schools that you're serving? Is there a certain time you guys like plan to come into our school? Because I heard you said you try to work around testing. Mm -hmm. So is there a certain time you guys are aiming at coming in our schools? Um, and is that due to your workload or something like that? It's due to the other schools that we see in Gadsden. But okay. So okay. what we've already okay. met, we met with Principal Ms. Um, Brandon. We met with her, we came over two weeks ago and met with her and okay. already planned the schedule for this next school year. So okay. knowing okay. that this last year was our first year, so we were kind of fitting it in between our others. So now knowing that we have these schools, now we have a better timeline of if we could spend a little bit more time here, if the need's there. Okay. Um, we're kind of, we were brainstorming on the way over here. So how we can serve more kids, even still doing our other. Okay. Yeah. I, did, I have a real quick question. Uh, the special fluoride that you use that you said is to, to prevent, prevent decay, will you have a way of telling what kind of success rate you have in that? Will you be able to monitor those kids also to? So we, 
it's interesting because we've been doing this in another program since 2019. So we're able to, with our data, be able to track the children that were at what risk they were at when we first started seeing them and start, first then started applying it, and then what kind of risk they're at a year or two later. So we're able to monitor what we're finding with most of the kids that we're applying it on. It's their primary teeth, and then usually when their permanent teeth erupt, we're not seeing the high rate of decay because that particular material mixes with the saliva, and so it actually works as a preventive measure continually. So as those new teeth are coming in, it's preventing new decay, so we're not seeing that high rate of decay. And then usually once they lose those baby teeth, then their permanent teeth are healthy and they're on a, um, and we're doing this even as the youngest ones, two-year-olds, they're playing, up, playing SPF. How, how are you gonna go up through middle school, high school, do you do that or you just stay in the elementary age? We're, our focus is on, yeah, the, the elementary. Okay, anything else? If not, we thank you for coming so and all the work that you've been doing for us. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, couldn't have done it without these two. So they've done a great job. Do you only go to, um, do you go to the middle school and high school as well? Yeah. No. Okay. With oh. our, with um, North Florida Medical, we're a federally qualified health center. so. All of our sites have to be approved by um, by HRSA, you know, so we can only go to schools that are approved. And for Taylor, we had the three schools added to our scope, so we liability-wise that we could provide services. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. How were y'all able to get that data in regards to our elementary schools? Did that come from census data, like, because you said you, you're federally funded. So how did you um, get the data in order to work in those schools? All we, we went by if they're Title I schools. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I don't ha I don't know any particular you know, data about the school, but Title I. Title I, okay. knowing that there's a high percentage, and I think all of the schools are qualified for free and reduced funds, yeah. or they did mm -hmm. last year. So really Title I is, is our benchmark. Okay. And also, I, um, just to expand on your question earlier, if we're able to see more children being in, coming into the school instead of going to the clinic, we could see they usually averaged about eight to 10 children a day per hygienist. So we're able to, to see a lot more. And that's the biggest feedback we got back, we received from the teacher or the principals <coughs> was that they didn't have to load those children on the bus to right. take them somewhere. Right. And a lot of the kids, you know, were really concerned that they were going to see the dentist and said, so, well, we're not the dentist, we're the dental hygienist, so we're here, we're not drilling and filling. So once they got past that they weren't getting on a bus to go get a shot and go, they, you know, really, and they received education, there was um, so much chair side and, you know, they all got goodie bags, you know, toothbrushes and toothpaste and um, it was really such a great positive experience for a lot of these kids that, had a bad experience and now we're trying to break that. Do you have, do you have any other um, schools that are in the middle school or high school? Not in any of the other counties. They're, they're all Title I okay. the elementary. Systems. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So you guys are not housed at the location here. You guys are coming out of Tallahassee? Out of Gaston. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, I know y'all have an office, I guess, or whatever. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, our corporate office is in Tallahassee, right. and then we have schools in Okaloosa County, which is where I am. They're, they're in Gadsden, so now we've all three covered here. So, so do you guys service Madison? Does, don't you guys have a location in Madison? We have a medical center in Madison. But y'all don't service them. Yes. Oh, okay. There may well, be future plans know. for, <laughs> yes. Um, so <laughs> we're, we plan on being in, growing in this area. Okay. And it's just in um, public schools, not private schools Correct. at all. Well, we thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We had another presentation this evening uh, by our Sheriff Wayne Padgett, uh, and uh, they're not present right now, but in his job, there are other things that can come up more important. But if he, if he comes in here later on, we'll allow him to, to address the board, okay? Brings us down to the acknowledgement of uh, donations. Uh, Scott Mixon of Georgia Pacific has notified us that the Coke communities through their community fund will be making a donation of $14,000 to the listed school programs for the 22-23 uh, school year. And we wanna thank Scott, uh, Mr. <coughs> Mixon for uh, his uh, work between the schools and Georgia Pacific. Um, I also want to thank Georgia Pacific and also the Coke Company for uh, this gift of uh, donation towards this coming school year. Also have an acknowledgement that Badcock Home Furniture and more has donated a 1999 Ford pickup to the diesel mechanics class at BBTC. And the value of this donation is in the amount of $3,500. So we thank them uh, for thinking about uh, our school system. It also brings us down to the items of interest by the public. Uh, if we have uh, anyone who'd like to address the board, uh, this would be the time to do so. Do we have anyone this evening? If not, we will move forward. Uh, all the consent items, except those that have been pulled, uh, were approved by the adoption of the agenda, and this brings us down to 4.10. Item number two, Ms. Mathis, you had, uh, you wanted to some discussion on this. Well, actually, I had a question, uh, um, and not about, it's about our insurance, and the, it's gone up substantially. And we talked about it when we first, when you first told us about our insurance going up, about putting it out to bid. Did we do that? And... <clears throat> And we did that, like, um, I'm asking. So when we put the bids out, we allowed agents to have all the bids. Like when we put it out, we put it out to all agents. That would. So we only ask for fully insured right. and after the right. applicant. Right. Um, right. Okay. What, what other insurance is there if there's not fully insured? Well, there's, I mean, there are other carriers. There's like Athena and, I mean, there are different United Health to be the ACA. So, would United Healthcare not? I mean, I, I think they're. Ms. 
facing all the protection requirements. We could only say in a, you know, administrative fees because that it's anything like if they bid it out, which Blue Cross and Blue Shield administer, the administrator of our self insurance, self insurance of our. seems like every year and I know the reason to be self-insured is that you, you pay X amount of dollars whether you spend them or not if you go with a full insurance but if it's self-insurance you pay that much money and then at the end of the year if you haven't paid that on claims you get that money back right it seems like every year so it's been more than like it hasn't really paid off so but one way or the other we probably have to pay that anyway remember we did get some money we did save some money early on when I was on the when we I first got on the board there was a two or three four years there that we didn't have that many claims and we did save money that helped us with our the last three we saved this, this, this recent on this committee this year that don't know, you know, like, I mean, it's really confusing how it all works, but, like, we spent, like, a long time going through all of it. It wasn't, like, it wasn't a quick, like, easy thing. <laughs> I'm sure if they're Ocala South, they were a lot higher. I don't know. Our area? Okay. Well, I think it was just, I'm glad we did that. I'm glad y'all did that work and looked into it because I feel like it'd been a while since we had bid it out or, you know, seen anything different. I'm sure I, that since I've been on the board, I hadn't. Heard of like, us doing it? Like Medicare don't do districts. But so I really thank y'all very much, and I mean we're doing the best we can. So. Um, okay. I make the motion. I'm satisfied. You didn't get the answer you wanted, but. <laughs> no, I did. I wanted to know about the bid. Had we done that, right. I wanted Thank to you. know what the outcome was. So I definitely got the answer. <clears throat> and I'll make the motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay, Miss Mathis seconds it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, so carried. This brings us down to item 12.07, reappointment of non-instructional personnel. Uh, recommendations for reappointment uh, for the 22-23 school year. Motion. All right, Ms. Agner makes that motion. Ms. Mathis seconds it. Any discussion? If not, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? So carried. And then this brings us down now to uh, item 12.19, uh, change in hours, days of 
for position or name change. Uh, Ms. Brannon, principal of Taylor County uh, Primary School, is requesting to change position 01415-1140, elementary education teacher, seven and a half hours, 10 months, to a guard, uh, guidance counselor position of 7.5 hours, 11 months position for the 22-23 school year. All right, Ms. Mathis makes that motion. Ms. Carlson seconds it. Also, uh, Ms. Kuehl, Director of Personnel, is requesting to change uh, the Taylor County Elementary School position number 01416-1105, guidance counselor, eight hour, 11 month position to MPSS, a seven and a half hour, 10 month position for the 22 23 school year. Um, I have a quick question. Um, let me let you finish that and can we go back to that first? Go ahead and finish your sentence, Tessa. Yeah, I can second it. Okay, yeah. I can motion second okay. it. I don't All right, so Ms. Mathis makes the motion. Do we have a second? Ms. Second. Darnell seconds it. All right, any other discussion? If not, did you have a question, Deidre? Not on that one. Okay. okay. If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? We did We did not vote on the number one. We didn't vote on number that one? That was my question with number one. You um, didn't ask for a motion. I mean, a vote. vote. We had a motion and second okay. for that. I stand to be corrected then. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Carlton made the motion. Jeannie made the motion. And you seconded. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Can I ask for, can we ask for discussion okay. real yes, quick? Yes, ma'am. Um, I kind of misread these. I thought all of these was being transferred to MTS, but the the um, one at the primary school is being transferred to guidance. The team, the, it's vacant right now. Nobody that is one. in it right now. No one's in that right. right now. Okay. All right. I I. I seen all of them, and when I seen from guidance <coughs> to MTS, I misread that one. So that's why I was trying to ask that question. Okay. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Number two, motion's been made by Ms. Mathis, <coughs> seconded by Ms. Dunnell. Any other discussion on it? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody aye. opposed? So carried. Item number three, uh, Ms. Peel, Director of Personnel, is requesting <laughs> to change uh, the Taylor County High School position number 01615-1153, a social studies teacher, a seven and a half hour, 10 month position to MTSS, a seven and a half hour, 10 month position for the 22-23 school year. All right, Ms. Mathis makes that motion. Ms. Carlton seconds it. Any discussion? I got a question. Um, these positions that's been transferred from like, um, it's been transferred from uh, social studies to a MTS. So is this position vacant? So it's not vacant. So the individuals that in them, when they was in these positions, was they working as a teacher or was they working as something else? The title is the only thing that's wrong. So is there a reason for that? Because I thought you guys do staffing plans every year. So these positions, let me make sure I'm understanding, they're not being advertised. Individuals are already in these positions. It's just their classification was wrong. And we didn't know that prior. Because, I mean, I understand that MTSS and guidance fall under instructional. But I guess my concern is that 
we do staffing plans every year. And so, I mean, I've seen before, like we've seen here before, where if something was advertised and we approved it and then it was later corrected, but for this to come a year later, I guess I'm just concerned about that. But Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we no longer have guidance at the elementary school. We just right now have guidance at our middle and high school, and we're adding primary. it to the, we're advertising it at the primary we school. Have that, to be clear, because the person who's in that position, as far as I'm concerned, is it the same in the high school? Or at where? At the elementary? At the elementary. Right, that's what I'm saying. So we no longer have it there, but... We're adding it at the primary. And they chose not to have that position because they chose to use that position in another way. Okay, so they don't have that position. Okay. And the only reason why I'm asking, because last year it was stated, when I asked this question, it was stated that those administrators wanted guidance positions, and now we are a year later and we don't want the guidance position. It's fine. I, we can move on. I mean, I understand what the concern okay, is, so and it understand. wasn't that. Yes, right. sir. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and second uh, for this item. Uh, do we have a all in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, so carried. Also, Ms. Kuehl is uh, requesting to change uh, Taylor County po primary position number 01415-1119, which is a seven and a half hour, 10 month elementary education teacher to the MTSS, a seven and a half hour, 10 month position for the 22-23 school year. Motion. All right, Ms. Agner makes that motion. Second. All right, Ms. Uh, Carlton seconds it. Any discussion? I, so, go ahead, Brenda. I just had one real quick question now. So, uh, this was a, this, this particular one's a teaching position. So, based on our staffing formula, um, I'm not exactly how, sure how y'all do that, but since the MTSS falls under the instructional, that's still a slot, right? Okay. Okay. I had a question. Are these established positions already that, for instance, the, the saying change these names, so for instance, item number two, when someone applied for that position, they had to qualify for the credentials of a guidance counselor, and now the credentials for the MTSS position are the same? No, what, she's, what she stated was that initially... They I know, were supposed I heard to what qualify she said, for but that, I'm but I don't think there's requirements under MTSS, right? Yeah, that was the initial right. So where number two, three, and four, where they're already established, number one is a vacancy, right? Isn't that what you just said? Yeah, so two, three, and four are established positions where the title but Angela's but they're in there with a asking. different job requirement. Right. That's or, what Angela's or, asking. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a little concerned about that. My, my apologies to the board and Mr. Shears that I didn't discuss this out of this venue, but uh, I'm, I'm just concerned about we're calling a name change and we have an established position, and you're essentially taking the person who qualified, for instance, in item number two for a guidance counselor position, and now you're saying, oh, by the way, your MTSS which is a established position with different credentials and you're not opening it up for advertising and the normal procedure. I mean, I, I'm just concerned if the union is going to have an issue with that. Well, that's why I asked essence, the question. They did away with the guidance counselor. Is in essence what they did. They did away with that position and okay. this person that was in that position was they transferred to an <coughs> MTSS position. So it's not like they needed to advertise for a guidance counselor because that position was done away with. The position was my wasn't, understanding. 
Am I understanding it wrong? You just said the person didn't want to meet the the, the um, school requirements. So the position was not done away with. It just looked like there's been adjustment because the person no, this, this wasn't interested in fulfilling. That's not what Angela was saying. Angela was saying, should that be advertised? Because that's technically fine. I just never seen that verbiage that we're changing the position. Typically, either the position was left vacant or just established, and then you're establishing the new one and opening it up for advertising with those pr proper credentials. So, um, I asked that question last year, and I was told, I asked this very question last year in regards to these positions and how they've been classified and the requirements of it, and what I was told then was that the people were meeting those requirements. But here we are a year later, saying those people was not interested in meeting that requirement, so now they're just getting a title change. And I understand that, but to me, until we as a district understand that policy doesn't change no matter who's in the chair, it, it's not the person as to whether or not requirements and policy are met, it's not the seat. It's, that's why we have policy. And so that's why I've always tried to ask the questions in regards to job requirements and qualifications because that's why policy in place. Policies can change because a person changed unless it comes back to the board and we address it and change it. But just because someone is trying to do a change in title or position, that's outside of policy. And that leaves the question that I initially was asking, which now Angela is following up. If we're not advertising and it's just a lateral transfer that caused union concerns. But is there going to be an advertisement for this position? For number one, but no. not two, three, and four. I, I would I would just ask, and I, again, apologies for not addressing this prior, but um, since we have a Tuesday meeting, I know this is, is important and, and you're at, you know, the timelines are important, but if the board will allow, I would ask that we have an opportunity where Ms. Um, the chairs and and Ms. Kill and I can get together and make sure that you know we're not going to run afoul of any union contracts well, that we're in. So well if we the board would make a motion to rescind the two, if that's the pleasure of the board. Well, now we've got. That's the one. Like the motion. We wouldn't okay, need. hang hang on for just a second here. Certainly, we want to do what is right, and uh, if uh, but now we've got four different. Um, items on this do we want to re rescind all four well, and, and come back first, number one is fine one but is there is no one in there and that's being advertised so that should i do not see i can stand corrected but i do not see it that there's no one in there it's currently being correct kiki that one's been advertised okay. she number one but yes yeah, she okay. requested yeah. it be advertised after so that one's fine happened. there's nothing i mean there's nobody in there. it's being advertised as the correct position that's number two, four. So two, that's three, four. One. Two, three, four is what we need to reset. Two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. Okay, uh, and bring them back to, to the board next next board meeting. I make a motion that we pull item okay. twelve point one nineteen. That, that we rescind these and bring them back. Do we have a second? Yes. Miss Miss Agler seconds okay. it. All right. Any any discussion? Any more discussion? Miss Mathis, you were trying to second, weren't you? I was trying to first, second, and third. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. Okay. Um, so the motion's been made and second on this. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. It's so carried. All right. So we don't need to vote on number four. We've rescinded. Correct. And this brings us down to uh, item 12.26 um, approval of salary schedules. Um, no, item number one, substitute salary schedule for the 22-23 uh, school year. Second. All right, Ms. Carlton, that's who made that motion you did. Ms. Carlton seconded. Um, and uh, any discussion? If not, uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Anybody opposed? So carried. Non-instructional salary schedule for the 22-23 school year. Ms. Mathis makes the motion. Ms. Carlton seconds. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So carried.
Item 15.01, this is, uh, uh, we have two items here. Approval of policy authorization to advertise for a public hearing. Number one, a policy chapter two, governance, uh, smoking and tobacco free environment policy. Ms. Mathis makes that motion. Second. And Ms. Carlton seconds it. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, so carried. Item number two is student progression plan for the 22-23 school year. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. <coughs> Mathis makes that motion. Second. All right, Ms. Carlton seconds it. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? So carried. Item 15.02, this is a public hearing. Uh, the updated board policy uh, 5.181, uh, which is dealing with homeless students. And this is a, uh, a public hearing. Do we have anyone who would like to address the board on this? If not, uh, what's the board's uh, discussion on this? Do we have any motion? Ms. Right, Ms. Car uh, Ms. Mathis makes the motion. Uh, Ms. Agner seconds it. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. And anybody opposed? So carried. <coughs> Item 16.01, the approval of tentative budget for advertising purposes. And so uh, we have our finance director come in here, but uh, the item number one is the approval of the tentative millage rate for advertising purposes for the 22-23 school year. Ms. Ashner. So, Department of Education, sorry for the late um, submission of that. The department waited until the last day allowable by law to send it to the districts for the required local effort, which they dropped again this year to um, 3.187. That also includes a prior period adjustment of 0 0.002 mills. Um, of course, we have our local capital improvement, um, which is our capital outlay of 1.5 mills, our discretionary operating 0.748, um, our voted uh, millage for operating 0.25 for a total millage of 5.6850. And you can see on your, um, in the, the packet. Rollback? Was there a rollback then? Yes. Did you say that? Was yes. it on new construction or <coughs> how did they do that? Did they separate it or? Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that part. What are you talking about? The rollback? The rollback on required lo local effort. Didn't you say it was? So they dropped it from last year. I believe it was like 3.58. They dropped it 0.395 mils. So almost a half mil they dropped for required local effort. Um, I don't, there's, there's a whole formula and statute um, for their reasoning behind that because everybody's changes. Um, but that's the required local effort that the board's required to adopt to participate in the FDFP. So you'll notice that what happens is that causes a, because even though our rollback was um, negative, it still causes a tax increase that we have to advertise a notice of proposed tax increase because our tax base went up significantly. So therefore, even though the millage rate is lower <coughs> than the prior year, it generates more money. So it's assumed to be a tax increase. So that's why you will see <coughs> that there is a notice of proposed tax increase that will be in the paper tomorrow. And the reason for that is not because the millage rate is higher, but because the tax base is more. So it generates more money. Right. So I'm asking the board for to approve 5.6850 as the millage rate for advertising. I second. Okay. She, she made the motion. All right, Ms. Mathis makes the motion that and, we. And I, and I second. All right, Ms. Carlton seconds this as for advertising purposes. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, so carried. And then All I right, can and briefly then go item number two is okay. approval of the tentative budget for advertising purposes for 22-23 uh, school year. So I will just briefly go over um, general fund. You'll see the total sources, 24.8 million. The transfer in being the transfer from capital outlay to cover a portion of our 
on property casualty premiums and we're allowed to cover a portion of our maintenance salaries that are related to capital outlay projects. Um, and then our fund balance ending June 30, 3.7 million for our total revenues and fund balances of 29.1 million for general fund. Um, you'll see if you compare from last year, our expenditures are up um, you know, quite a bit. Retirement went up. Our, um, our FISBIT premiums for property and casualty increased. Um, we have the minimum wage requirement. What um, page do you want me to look at? The, the, the same page. Okay. I'm just talking about the, the budget. Um, <coughs> you know, minimum wage um, increase was quite substantial. Um, we have teacher salary increase in there mandated um, you know, by the state. So you'll see our total appropriations for general fund are 26.6 million. So that leaves an overall fund balance of about 10% and we will definitely be knocking on the door of our minimum of eight um, by board policy. So we'll be watching that um, really closely, you know, as the year get, goes in when the students show up, Mr. Shears and I will be, you know, looking at ways that we can make adjustments going forward, you know, if we need to. Um, you can see special revenue is quite large. That includes, of course, our CARES money, you know, we've got three different pots of that, CARES, CRISA, and now ARP. Is that the total amount or is that just for this That's school what's, year? That's what's this school year, what's left, right, basically. Right. That's and not we've in total. Got, we've got a couple more years to spend yes. some of this money, but yes. in this pot right here, it doesn't include those future years. Or yes, does, it does yes, include yes, the future yes. years. Unless we get additional monies, which... I think there's a few pots floating around out there and I don't know if they're that we qualify or we will go for them or not, but the substantial amounts have already been awarded. There won't be any big large pots, I hope. But just in this this budget. That's in here. And yes. it, but that budget can follow for a couple more years. Yes. Okay. Yes. And not all of that is CARES, but CARES is included in your special okay. revenue fund. That's I just want to make sure. Um, so that includes food service, CARES, um, IDEA, Title One, um, those sorts of things. And so you'll see there's um, $12.8 million um, budgeted in revenue for that fund. The $381,000 fund balance, that is our food service um, fund balance. It will also be taking a hit next year because the $15 an hour for your um, food service workers comes out of that fund. Um, so, but even still, like the fund is healthy enough and um, Mr. Blue does a good job in managing that, that we should be on track. Um, so you'll see the um, total expenditures. 12.9 million, um, that transfer out, that is a um, transfer that's allowable under ARP that we can, and that's just a projection, we don't, it could change, um, allowable for <coughs> COVID related medical expenses that we are allowed to transfer into our self-insurance fund. So this past year, we actually did a $780,000 transfer and that saved our self-insurance fund. Um, and those were directly related to COVID you know, COVID related claims, whether it be, you know, related, you know, residual or direct. Um, so that's your special revenue. We do not have debt service capital projects. That's mainly your um, 1.5 mil, your capital outlay. We have some um, safe and secure monies that come from the state as appropriations. That's about $42,000. Um, and they use that for, you know, cameras, safety related things, the, the enclosures, the doors, um, we've done different projects with those. So you'll see um, with fund balance, there's about 3.3 million um, for capital projects, um, that 565,000 going out, that's going to general fund for that transfer. Um, enterprise fund, that is our self-insurance fund. You will see that I have a zero fund balance. I hope that it is zero and that, or it is in the black and, and not negative. So we'll also be monitoring um, that. You'll see that the um, there is a fund balance at June 30 that we're starting with. Hopefully we end with a positive fund balance. So we'll also be you know monitoring that. As we know, the board is responsible for ensuring that that um, program is funded. So the state will not check off for us to allow to have that program if it is not adequately funded. So it may be that there's a letter written that says we have general fund dollars, you know, that will cover that if, you know, the need arises. So we'll be monitoring that closely. 
Um, and so you can see that we've got 3.9 million in revenue and that includes the increase in employee premium and the board contribution um, for next year. And of course, expenditures are just, you know, they're a guess, they're based on what the actuaries say, based on the claims that we've already had. We hope that they're lower than that. Some of those are fixed and we do know what they will be, but the claims we do not. So we're projecting 4.5 million and then, you know, wiping that fund out. Um, so for a total um, budget for next year, $50,302,851. And now this is tentative. There are some things that have come across my desk since I've sent this out. And so there will be some changes to the final budget. Um, they are grant related. So I'll talk about those specifically when we bring it back. Yes, ma'am. What percent do you think we're at for payroll, personnel, salaries? Of our 50 it's hard to tell right 50. now. I've done some moving around, and so when the dust settles, and I'll have that to you by before we do final budget talks. Okay. Any other questions? If not, um, do I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. I'm sorry, who made the motion? Okay, Ms. Gunnell and Ms. Mathis. Brenda. Ms. Gunnell, but Ms. Okay. Carlton. Ms. Carlton, okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? So carried. Thank, Thank you, you Ashley. Ma Thank you, Ashley, for all your work. Uh, it'll be in the paper you say tomorrow, right? <coughs> All right, this brings us down to items of interest by the superintendent and the board. Uh, Ms. Uh, Bashir, do you have anything this evening? Just again, say thank you to the uh, ladies who came tonight who spoke with us about the success of the dental program. I think that's uh, a wonderful thing. Anytime that you can go into the schools, you don't interrupt as much and you don't have to travel and um, just not having that fear of an office. I think that was wonderful. Uh, again, I want to also thank um, Scott Mixon and the Koch brothers for their donations. We could not do some of those special programs without that. Um, and we've had a lot of success in those STEAM programs as well as um, some of the things that the schools have been able to do just because of their dental assistance. So I do want to tell them thank you for that. Other than that, uh, really just tell you that we just came back from our PACE Leadership Conference in Destin and um, we learned a lot of things with a lot of legislative updates that some of them, you know, we had kind of already known about. And then, and it was good to hear from GOE directly on some other things. So I think that was worthwhile. We had a couple of other groups that we, we normally go to the PACE conference all together. We did not this year. We chose to go to different conferences because different schools have different needs. So our K-5, um, principals went to the Bureau of School Improvement Conferences in Orlando, and our um, ESC supervisor went to a conference for, e for that particular um, subject, you know, for ESC um, coordinators also. So we did do something different this year, but I think it was what was needed because <coughs> we have different needs. So. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ball, do you have anything? I do not, thank you. Okay, uh, Ms. Gunnell. Yes, I want to thank um, the women that was here tonight from North Florida Medical Center. Um, I hope I said that right, because there's so many in North Florida. But I want to thank them again for their services and the fact that they was able to go into our schools. Um, it would be great if we can get something like that throughout our district, but I'm appreciative for what we have and where we're at. And so I want to acknowledge um, them for that and those schools for working well with making sure those students receive those services because they acknowledge those administrators and teachers. So I want to make sure we acknowledge that. I want to thank um, Miss, um, I want to thank Georgia Pacific <coughs> and um, Scott Mixon um, for, you know, the continued partnership in regards to um, like it stated on the agenda, our different programs where we're receiving that community support. I want to thank Bad Cop for their donation. Again, anytime we're able to build partnerships within our community, that's, um, that's a good plus. <coughs> um, I want to acknowledge um, Mr. Page. <laughs> um, I didn't realize 
he had um, passed away until yesterday. So I want to send condolences to the Page family um, and all those connected to that family. I had Mr. Page as a math teacher, and I think that was the last time I had a class with my twin sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I always enjoyed him, and I got to see him actually a couple of months ago um, at the dentist's office. We ran into each other, and I actually hadn't seen him since sometime last year. So it was good to see him, and um, as his obituary said, I think we will remember him most for his stories and jokes. But I want to extend my condolences to those families and the other families. Um, our community has been hit with a lot here recently, so I want to acknowledge those other families that are dealing with um, different situations that they are right now. And, you know, I'm looking forward to um, what's left of the summer and I thank you guys for the information that was presented tonight. And I'm looking forward, you know, to us wrapping up these next couple of weeks and getting back, um, you know, look headed into our next school year. So. Okay, thank you. Ms. Agnew. Well, basically everything that Jude just said and going to Malcolm, he uh, did not mind sharing his information with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I often thought of he... One of the first things he did was call me when I decided to run for the board and gave me some great advice. And I've, I've held on to that ever since. Uh, you, as y'all know, Daddy is Sammy's first cousin. So we kind of close in it, you know, but Malcolm was definitely a, a, a landmark, I would call him. He, he was just, he was always good to share uh, with. Um, great family man just just always there when you needed him uh, appreciate all the donations as always um, I don't you know we're talking about the uh, millage and without Pope brothers and DP this county would be hurting this district would be hurting as far as that goes so we're, we're very thankful not only for the donation but also for their presence in this district um, the dental people that that's awesome i mean you know most kids are scared to death to go to the dentist and when they don't have to you know go in an office and and they, and two another thing they'll see all the other kids doing it and when when they that that calms their nerves too um i want to continue to pray for the families that are hurting um it's just uh, been some like we just said some rough times here in Traeger county um I'm thankful that we're in a small community and everybody loves on everybody. Um, we're all brothers and sisters, and, you know, and it shows, and I appreciate that from this community. And I appreciate Miss Lisa being here. She's, she's already hit the road running and had a good meeting with her the other day, and I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. And uh, uh, as a lot of the public doesn't understand she's not our boss we're not her boss we're all elected officials and we serve the community and we work together and i think that it's this is going to be a good working team we're looking forward to next thursday we're going to do the training for the master board and um, that just helps reiterate where our what our positions are and where our lanes are but other than that i think that's it okay thank you miss mathis well everything that they said and for what Mr. Page and family and the, um, the family of the man who was lost at sea and the dropout there, that family, were in my prayers. And also, um, I wanted to say congratulations to Jody Tillman for being inducted <laughs> into the CTE Teachers Hall of Fame. What a huge deal. The Florida... CTE Teachers Hall of Fame. That is awesome. That is amazing. Yeah, she was at that big event. Yeah, they got him there. And that young man that was in there, Edward he's in Cologne. The, yeah, well he. That's a real, real high. Uh, at a boy, where he wound up nationally, nationally second, Some second place. Yeah. So it's really good too. Yeah. That's the reason she's in the Hall of Fame for, for, for a school that's like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but um, um, well, she's amazing at where she is. I'm sure we get we get to see her as a, you know, at the upper level of that, not really in the classroom teaching, but she's certainly taught me things since she's been here. And every conversation, I, I, every conversation that I have with her, I think she teaches me 
something new about CTE certifications, and the, so I mean, it was just very happy for her. That's well deserved. And I passed one of the new school buses today, and they look awesome. Have y'all passed the school bus yet? Let me tell you where I passed the school bus at. I passed it on 51 going into Steam Hatchy. So I'm really glad to know that one of the school buses ended up down there in the marsh. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one of the new ones. Uh -huh. and, um, and it's pretty. It's very pretty. There is no mis Sometimes we get new buses, and it's like, oh, that's a new bus. These these look like Tiny, huh? big yellow rocket ships. They're very nice looking school buses. So, yeah, I'm excited to see those out there. And we have five on here that we're going to auction off to some lucky winners <laughs> um, as well that we're disposing of. And um, uh, also, I wanted to thank Ashley. I don't th I think she's gone now, but in, and especially for I'm really interested to see where we end up with our um, what percent of our budget is going to to um payroll and salaries and benefits that that tells us a lot there where we are and and I think at the same time I'd like to see a staffing formula an updated staffing formula for the school for the district and the schools as we look at that I think that would be very helpful too as we go forward with our budget planning and I think that's about it for right now okay well thank you Ms. Carlton okay I guess I can just repeat everything uh, but 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 th thanks for the donations. I do, we do appreciate all the donations and for the presentation tonight for North Florida Medical. That was nice. I do offer my condolences to Malcolm Page's family. It's a and it's a big family, so it's a such a such a lot of family. Uh, the reminder on Master Board that's eight thirty next Thursday, and um, here uh, I think Shannon's going to put us. I think we're going to do it in the PDR room because she wanted a board and all that and it's. So it's public yeah then. Okay. But we'll start at eight thirty. Okay. Um I actually went to the Florida School Board Insurance Trust training last week that was for the risk managers and uh they had a lot of good training. We had a lot of attorneys there that were updating on a lot of um they share information a lot on sometimes on, you know, claims that are within the uh, other districts, but it's learning. It's it's really good learning. But it was uh a very good two days of training and I had, had I had planned to stay a little bit longer but I had to come back for a funeral so um, we did that I'd like for us to acknowledge CDTC if we could a little bit later on when Jody gets back at, at Edward Cologne I couldn't find it but it was a very good I think it's a national it is national. I mean he was a national was a number one well we just need to give it I, I got it right I tried here. to look it up but I'll find it on Facebook it's just really really good we actually did, um, we had two students, I hadn't mentioned it to Shannon, I forgot the email, but we had a student that was recently nominated or recognized for some type of state recognition back at the end of the school year. Is that the one that you're talking about? <laughs> and we you can't also hear. had, um, <laughs> Alicia can't hear. Yeah, I can't think of the name of the student, but it was in the newspaper, but the student got recognized for something with FBLE, I mean FDOE. Um, Florida Department of Education. It was a high school student, but I hadn't seen them us recognize them here at the board. So I don't, I don't know the student student name, but it was in. Y'all had it in the newspaper. It's um, caught, it's saying that he, this Edwin, Edwin Cohen received the honor of all these, a F A C T E post secondary student of the year. So. Um, Yes, we'll make sure we get that up as a yeah. recognition by them. Yeah, we will. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I, it, was this was the one they had year? in the newspaper. It was the end of this school term. It was probably on here. We had, it was, y'all had it back, I think, at the first of June or end of May, but it was some type of state recognition for one eye, high school kids and something with DOE. Um, I had been meaning to ask that we recognize they them probably, here, but I They forgot. probably uh, won something at the, uh, state competition yeah okay there was right here is where some this uh Allery back pl placed seventh in the nation in first day cpr and then the 17th in the nation in we recognized them at the board meeting though already for oh no not master board that was great wasn't it yeah that was all is that that's all you got okay 
Uh, well, we'll wind this down then. Um, I concur with what uh, the other board members have said uh, once again uh, for, uh, first of all, Mr. Shears, this is her first board meeting, so, and sitting in that chair, so, um, we just, you'll get, you'll get used to it. <laughs> a little tipsy over here. Hey, and, uh, app appreciate the report, uh, from the North Florida, uh, dental team. Um, also the donations that were, uh, mentioned tonight, uh, with, uh, GT and uh, uh, appreciate them being a partner with the school system. Also with uh, Badcock uh, giving uh, that uh, vehicle for our mechanics or future mechanics to work on. Um, and uh, then I'd like to also, uh, been a lot of things going on. Here we are just really two, three, about three weeks away from school, really getting back in. Uh, just going around looking, the parking lots looks good and uh, coming along and uh, all the other things that's taking place and school will be back in very shortly. Uh, and also uh, for Mr. M or I call him Brother Malcolm, but uh, uh, for the Page family, uh, uh, you know, it, it, when, you've, when you've known someone your whole life, you know, it's, it, it becomes kind of like when they when they leave, it's just, it don't seem real. It don't seem real. And I turn 70 tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I still can see him over here, which is now the middle school. I can still see myself sitting in that, uh, out in the classroom with him up there trying to explain to this old hardhead <laughs> algebra. Mr. Page told you? <laughs> so I mean, he—I mean, bless his heart. He's been around with us for a mighty long time. He surely has. Uh, but we, we, you know, our, you know, our, our thoughts go out to the family and uh, and the community will miss him also. And uh, but um, that's just part of life. And uh, but I thank everybody for coming tonight. And. Uh, Good board meeting, good discussion. Got some issues we need to see about. But uh, other than that, um, we thank everybody for being here. Um, do I have a motion Wait, to second? Can, can, yes. So our meeting is Tuesday night at 4.30? At 5.45. We went to 5.45. Okay, we didn't change it. Well, we were going to do a workshop at 4.30. We're, we're, not, we're not doing a workshop. Okay, so okay, so next, next, Tuesday, next Tuesday night, 5.45 for our board meeting. Okay. okay. Do I have a motion and a second that motion. we adjourn? Motion. Second. All right, Ms. Darnell makes that motion. Second. And Ms. Carlton seconds it. If you're in favor of that, say aye. Aye. If you're opposed. <laughs> Whatever. Thank Place you. This, this meeting is, is, is adjourned. Place